Are you wanting a massive return this year and be on your way to hitting your goal of reaching seven figures and beyond? Well, guess what? Of course, there are many opinions on what stocks are gonna get you there. And I have found a list of the 10 best stocks to buy for the remainder of this year to crush the market, or at least that's what they say it will do. So let's take a look and analyze each one of these stocks and see if they're a millionaire maker stock or not. Just make sure you like the video if you like getting the truth without the hype. Now keep in mind guys, this is not my list of stocks. So if you don't see stocks that I like, or you guys know that I like, or stocks that you feel I should be talking about, and kind of wondering why, why aren't you talking about this one, Luke? Well, hey, it's not my list guys. You guys know this kind of isn't my thing. I, I of course put out stocks that I'm buying, but I'm not going to put out a different list of 10 best stocks to make you a million dollars. And then the next month, put out another new list of the 10 newer stocks to make you a million dollars this month and so on and so forth like that. It's just not my thing because I don't have a business built around giving you 150 picks a year that then I can cherry pick out the, the picks that win and show those to you and, you know, ignore the other 130 or so. Uh, that I put out there. Of course, you're going to have winners if you pick 150 stocks at some point in time. These are the best stocks to make the most amount of money in their eyes for the rest of 2024. And I got to be honest with you guys, there are some good stocks on here, but there's a lot of picks that just baffle me. And of course, I'd love to hear your opinion too. Put those down in the comments. I'd love to talk about it. So first up, we have Google. So, I mean, honestly, they started off this list with a bang there. I think it's a great company, great stock, great long-term future. I have nothing negative to say about Google outside of the fact that the time to really buy this stock was basically during the March timeframe earlier this year. That's whenever I added it back to my watch list and we were gobbling up shares and we're up over, I think 30% or so on those shares so far this year. And just basically just in the past few months, kind of a very similar situation to whenever chat GPT was gonna kill Google and you could pick up shares in the eighties. I think we bought a bunch back then too. I don't know why Wall Street does this to the stock every once in a while. They just, that's kind of been the recent history with the stock and we're snapping up shares every single time it goes on a significant dip like this. Now, the beauty of a stock like Google is it still trading cheap relative to its other big tech brethren out there that are trading, not all of them are trading rich, but they're definitely trading richer than what Google is. So it's still at a very reasonable valuation. And if I wouldn't have just bought a whole bunch of shares, I would definitely be considering adding more at these price levels because I just think Google's going to be a great stock next year and the year after and the year after. So I'm happy to add shares every time Wall Street gets dumb and gives us a great dip on this stock. But then it gets a little strange with number two, and that would be Discover. I have a bit of an odd play here, if I'm being perfectly honest. I mean, they're getting bought out by Capital One, so maybe there's an arbitrage play there. I mean, I'm not, not really sure why this one made the list specifically there. And credit card companies typically are great bets overall, unless the economy just falls completely off the cliff, which there's no actual indications of anything falling off the cliff right now. Um, obviously we're going to see defaults rise and some things like that as interest rates finally start taking their toll on the consumer there, but I don't see any, you know, massive cliff to where there's some sort of a, a crazy downturn coming. So yeah, I can understand wanting a credit card play, but out of all the plays thinking this is going to be the one that's really going to be the, it's going to skyrocket there. I just don't see it. I don't see a lot of upside. There's probably a trade here and okay, that's great. And for that trade, you need to kind of consider what happens if the, you know, the merger goes through. What happens if it doesn't go through? More importantly, where do you stand with Discover itself and what will happen in that? So you got to kind of plan those scenarios. And it's just one that kind of, I don't know, baffles me to be on this list here as one of the best stocks to buy in 2024, considering it might not even be a stock anymore by the end of it there. Again, there may be an arbitrage play there. I just don't know. So use a lot of caution with this one. So stock number three is Disney. I do own Disney as well. And I bought my shares under $80 or so when it kind of went through its controversy and everything was all kicked up. And you know, I don't know, everybody's saying it's dead or whatever the case was, which clearly isn't true because I'm up over 30% on those shares since then. So when kind of controversies like that kick up, that's kind of what I like to buy because generally speaking, you make a lot of money on the back end there because it's a temporary, it's a short-term problem. But, but I have to be honest here with Disney. Disney, it was just not a short-term problem with Disney. They also have business problems that they need to solve. And that's really kind of the long-term concern here with Disney is can they continue to solve those business problems? They have problems at the park. They have problems with their various streaming services and how, and how they're going to basically kind of reorganize all that, maybe sell some of it. There's a lot of different rumors out there that Bob Iker has to solve and he has to figure out there. So for me, this is definitely one that you've got to use caution with and understand that it's going to be a roller coaster with this stock. Now, if they can solve those business problems long term, it's going to be a great stock, but they've got to solve them first. And right now we're right in the middle of that and we don't have any clear picture as to if they're going to be able to successfully solve them or not. So number four is PDD Holdings. So this one's basically a Chinese growth stock that's kind of comparable to JD and Baba, at least from what I researched there quickly. 
Um, and for me, this falls into the, there may be a trade there. I'm not real sure. But for right now, it seems like Chinese stocks are going to trade basically in the band range. And it's a relatively wide range too with all the Chinese stocks that I at least follow there and some of the stocks that we follow there in the group in regards to that. Until the Chinese economy turns around, I don't see any reason for these stocks to break back out. I have seen great earnings with several different Chinese stocks and it gets a little bit of a bump, but it just can't seem to break out of these ranges. And we don't really know what's going on with the Chinese economy right now. Everybody that's putting numbers out there is strictly guessing. Nobody has any real insight into that. And so until we see some more strengthening in their economy overall that we're actually able to tangibly see and feel, more importantly, in the earnings reports themselves across the board, it's going to be a very tough road to hoe for a lot of these stocks. So this one's what definitely one. If you're going to buy it, you have to understand what you're buying, understand that you know Chinese stocks are always going to trade at a discount to U.S. stocks and other international stocks. So you've got to understand that, be patient with it, and understand we are not on the other side of the problems there in China. We're right in the middle of it right now. Do I think they get through it long term? Of course. Um, but this is not going to be easy and it's going to take time. So you got to understand that volatility that's going to come with a stock like this. So number five is Occidental Petroleum. Now this one is a Warren Buffett favorite, but I'm being honest, guys, it's not one of my favorites. I'm looking for growth and this is not a growth style stock unless you think oil is just going to go to some ridiculous price, which as we've seen in the past, it happens. And then just as quickly as it runs up, it craters right back the other way. Now we never see it on the gas pump on the other side because that's just... I don't know. That's a whole different topic for a whole different discussion there. I'm not going to get into that here, but nonetheless, um, and I'm also not a commodities guy. You need to understand commodities and how they move and how they trade in order to effectively um, move into these stocks and understand what you own there. So for me, it's not one that I look for in regards to a particular stock that I would look at in general. And then on top of that, I know it's not going to be and give me the growth potential that I want in the future there. So I understand why Warren owns it, but for me, it's not right for my portfolio and my goals in my portfolio. So next up, is Match Group. Now they own Match.com, Tinder, and I don't know, a bunch of other stuff like that. But their earnings have been terrible for the past three years running. They've been bad this year so far, but yet according to the article, it's a swipe right, which I assume swiping right is a good thing. I don't really know. I'm not sure all those sort of things work. My employees seem to think I need to have it, but I don't know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you guys can try to figure that out. I have no idea. I just know that whenever I look at this stock, I don't know why they came up with this pick. I don't know if it's just kind of the one random one that they threw in. I don't have a clue there, but for me, I don't know. I guess I'm swiping left on this one because I don't really want anything to do with it. I don't really see a play there at this stage. Maybe there's a turnaround play and plan, but they definitely didn't mention that in the article itself. And again, I'm not going to go back and listen to the past uh, two, three, four earnings calls either for a stock that I don't really have a lot of interest in there. So not real sure why this one's on there. And it definitely doesn't kind of fit with the rest of the stocks that they kind of included on this list. So that's the reason why I said maybe it's the one outlier, maybe it's the one, you know, call option basically on their list of 10, but it's one I don't have any interest in and I'm not swiping on anything until they show me something in the actual earnings. Number seven is ASR. Now I'll be honest with you guys, I can't pronounce the name at all. I have no idea. And it's one I had to actually go look up and do a little bit of research on because I'd really never heard of it before, but it's a Mexican airport operator there and they have been just killing it in regards to returns the past couple of years. And on top of that, they pay a dividend as well. So they basically begin in, uh, you know, growth stock style growth along with a dividend to boot there. It's kind of a rare combination there. So it is risky, however, because you have to understand the business of what they do, which is kind of the first piece, which I personally don't understand. I uh, just really have never studied it, to be honest. Maybe it is something that's easy to pick up. And then you also have to understand the Mexican economy and how it's moving and kind of what Mexico's growth trajectories are into the future there. They are actually making large moves in regards to taking a lot of, uh, you know, importing, or I guess it would be exporting into the U.S. away from China. A lot of things are moving down to Mexico for obvious reasons. Um, and so there is a play there. I also know some other large investors that are also investing in Mexico because they feel like it could be an emerging place to invest. But you have to understand those dynamics on a deep level, not just what you hear on the news or, you know, that's not at a deep level there or a YouTube video or an article or anything like that. If you understand those dynamics intimately, then it might very well be a stock that's worth looking at. But if you don't understand those things, it's definitely one, man, do your research, do your due diligence and understand that you're dipping into something that you may not understand all the dynamics around the stock. So stock number eight is Target. I own this one in my dividend portfolio there, and I was able to add all my shares down in those low $100 range after all the controversy kicked up. I, I hate it. I hate it when it happens. But typically these political controversies that kick up, they are just opportunities to buy cheap shares, regardless of what the narrative is out there or anything else. 
Like we said before many times on this channel, they just tend to be short-term and long-term great businesses do just fine. And we've seen that in the earnings since all that stuff kicked up. And to be honest, in regards to valuation, it's still trading relatively cheap. I mean, you look at it's trading at what, a 16 or so multiple, a forward multiple, Walmart's trading at a 27, Costco's trading up over 40. So it is definitely trading cheap compared to kind of its peer group there. So it's one, although I built out my position, it's definitely one that's trading cheap enough to where you could continue to build out a position if you're looking for a dividend stock uh, with some growth potential as well. Again, I'm not worried about Target at all long-term. But I gotta be honest too, it's not a stock that I would buy in regards to growth. Like I said, it's kind of in my dividend portfolio here, which has kind of been the weirdness with this list is these are the best stocks for the rest of the year. And a lot of them are very, very much plays like this where a lot of the growth opportunity has already kind of come out of the stock, but hey, it's not my list, it's theirs, so let's move on. So stock number nine is PIMCO 25 plus year treasury index. Now this one is a really, really defensive pick. Basically the way it works is, um, obviously we've had rates go up and obviously that has hurt this particular stock in the long term. but as they cut rates, that right there is where the stock price starts to increase because they're buying long range bonds. Uh, obviously these higher interest rates there. So that way it kind of yields a little bit better. And of course those bond prices move up, but I don't really see significant rate cuts happening this year. And I'm sorry, if you think a couple of quarter point cuts or three quarter point cuts is gonna somehow send this stock to the moon, I don't know what to tell you. That's just not how this is gonna work. Now, if you think there's some impending disaster coming in this doom and gloom, uh, you know, if you believe one of those narratives and you think it's, uh, you know, the Fed's gonna have to react quickly and slam the rates back down to zero or something like that. Okay, this could then, go to the moon at that stage if that were to happen. But that is totally playing 100%, basically playing prevent defense at that stage to me when I look at this stock. Now, maybe if you had a $100 million portfolio or something like that, having a good chunk of that in this particular stock makes perfect sense, but I don't, I'm looking for growth. So to me, this stock makes absolutely no sense to have in my portfolio at this time. And number 10 is Citigroup. They mentioned that this stock was up 25% for the year. And guess what guys, they see 7% more upside from the date of this list. I mean, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me considering the fact they called it a steal at this price. And I'm sorry, when I think of steal, I don't think a 7% upside over the next, you know, six, seven months or so. That to me is not a steal, but again, it's not my list. I'm not saying City's a bad stock or anything like that. They are right in the middle of a turnaround there. They're doing well so far in regards to that turnaround. But I don't know, that's just, I don't know. They call it a steal <laughs> and tried to play it up. And I was like, well, maybe it was at the beginning of the year, but it definitely isn't now. And especially if you're only expecting 7% by the end of the year to come in there. I'm sorry, you just didn't get a steal there. We've seen more than those gains in some stocks just since March, like we pointed out there with Google, much less a lot of other stocks that I think are gonna perform far better than 7% during the next six months or so. Which if you wanna see that complete list of all the stocks I think are gonna perform better, there's uh, 15, 16 or so on that list, make sure you check out the pinned comment down there for my group where you get my complete watch list with price targets. You can see all my balance sale alerts on real time if you wanted to see whenever stocks dip, am I loading up or not on the stocks? There's actually two right now that I've re-added kind of or moved up my watch list in terms of a you know weekly DCA or so, because I think there's massive opportunity there and there's another mispricing in the market there. Or if you just wanna take advantage of the $250 portfolio challenge and be a part of that and see exactly what stocks I would buy if I was building out a portfolio from scratch, which of course is very different than what I would do with my portfolio currently. My other portfolio is there. You can see that as well. There are two different tiers for you to choose from. Just check out the pinned comment down there and see if a membership's right for you. And click this video here if you wanna see exactly what I'm buying in this market and click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.